Hey there, sleepyhead. Huh? <laughs> Up and Ow! As usual, he got me the little prick. What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel and another extremely gorgeous day in Pittsburgh, PA. Today we're gonna take a little trip down memory lane and uh, I guess I'm gonna do a video that I've been asked to do for years and years and we're gonna talk about pretty much how I ended up here as most of you guys already know is that I'm from Sweden I'm not from the United States but I now live here since 2012 and there's a lot to cover because a lot has happened since 2012 but before we get into all that uh, we're actually going to take a trip to Best Buy because the camera that I'm filming with now is, is it's good. But I've been looking to get another vlogging camera. And I get a lot of people asking me, you know, what, what equipment do you use and, and that kind of thing. And I always list it in the description of every video. And sometimes I'm even kind of hesitant to tell people like, oh, I'll use this and that because you don't really have to. When it comes to starting a YouTube channel and so on, you should just run with it. Just go. Use your phone. But now a few years down the road, you know, I've evolved a little bit I like having different types of cameras you know action cameras and you know sliders and tripods and drones and all that good stuff so this morning here we're gonna jump in the Ferrari and I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go pick up a new camera god I love this red key you know it's not the newer modern fancy you know key fobs per se it's still like a regular key but I don't know it's just something about it I love it <laughs> Never gets old. It's always a little jittery, kind of jumpy until it gets warm, but with it being a naturally aspirated V12, they warm up pretty quick. So it's uh, pretty much warm enough, and uh, we're gonna talk about why this car needs an exhaust so bad. 4,500 RPM is where the valves open. After 4500 RPM, it sounds great, but like you have to get up to uh, speeds that are, you know, slight, just slightly over the speed limit. Mom. And that needs to change. It needs an exhaust. Oh, back up. So we'll go down to first again. So we're at 3500 RPM. It sounds so good, but it can sound so much better. This thing needs an exhaust. So here we are, Best Buy. All right, so let me go inside and uh, I guess buy this new camera and I'll be right back. All right, so here it is. It's the Sony AX6400. Alright, so we're back home. We're just gonna unbox this new camera real quick. Life of a vlogger, we have to do everything with one hand. The first camera I buy with like a... I mean, it isn't like a mega DSLR lens, but it's a proper lens. Here's the camera body, look at that. Now obviously this video is not a uh, camera review at all. So the main reason why I bought this one is I want to be able to film in 120 frames per second. You know, I film a lot in 4K and in the beginning I thought 4K was so awesome, but frames per second in 4K is, you know, a maximum of 30. I mean, you can get 60, but if you film 4K 60, the files are, you know, the size of Mount Everest and it's just too big. More important to me actually is the frame rate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge this camera and then we're gonna get into the topic of today's video, of course, how I came to the United States, why I came here, you know, what my life actually looks like now, you know, how happy I am and how I ended up driving a Ferrari. Okay, filming with the 6400. And I already really, really like it. What do you guys think? Currently filming in 60 frames per second and the autofocus it's supposed to be amazing on this camera. So what we're going to do real quick, just to give this camera a little test. I'm going to pull out the uh, Ferrari and do some glamour shots. Maybe even get the Raptor in there.
Okay, so here we are. Same spot where I film a lot of my videos nowadays. A lot of car reviews have been filmed here. A lot of crazy stuff with the old hoopty as well. But let's get into the video. So I've been thinking about how to start this video because a lot of you guys, you know about the YouTube channel from point A to B, C, D and where we are right now. But you don't know about my past and like sort of when I came here, how I met my wife and you know, that whole deal, you know, my life in Sweden before I came to the United States. And if you're new to the channel and this is the first video you're watching, you don't know any about this. So I guess we'll just start at the beginning and then uh, go step by step. I'll try to keep it as uh, short and concise as possible here. But I was born in Sweden in a town called Örebro in 1978. And during my childhood we moved around a lot. Several different cities in Sweden. I also lived in Norway. We lived in the United States for one year back in 1990. That was Kansas City, Kansas. I was 12 when we got there. So I kind of picked up the language, you know, being young, you don't get the heavy accent. A lot of people ask me, why don't you have a heavy Swedish accent? That's why. Then we moved back to Norway and then we moved to Sweden again. So during my childhood, I was constantly uprooted. You know, you start your whole schooling, you get to know friends and then uh, you move. And then you don't have those friends anymore. You have to, you know, get to know new friends and there's new schools, there's new teachers, there's new languages and it's back and forth. So at the time, that was very tough for me. You know, I mean, I had security in my family, of course, but I didn't really have a lot of security when it came to close friendships because I was constantly uprooted all the time. If we fast forward to now, you know, going through that when I was younger definitely made me, you know, stronger and very independent. You know, both my sister and I, she'll attest to this, we feel like we could pretty much just be dropped at any place on planet Earth and we would figure it out. You know, we'd get to know new people, we'd find jobs, we'd learn the languages, like that. That's just because of how we grew up. So even though it was tough at the time, you know, it made us the people we are today. So I'm actually grateful for, you know, my whole upbringing and, you know, everything that I've gone through up to this point here. And that's kind of what life is about. But then if we go back to, I think it was 1996, we finally moved to Gothenburg, Sweden. It's the second biggest city in the country it's on the west coast and when we did that the people i got to know uh, at that time are the people i now consider you know childhood friends although i was 17 slash going on 18 at the time you know they're my closest friends now although they all live in sweden <laughs> because i moved here so i mean during that time that's kind of when you enter into adulthood and uh you turn into the person that you know you're supposed to be i guess I mean, I don't know how else to put it, but during that time, I was kind of uh, unmotivated. I didn't really pursue, you know, college. I didn't really have passion for something. And that kind of bothered me, you know, during that time of my life. I always felt like, you know, if I'm gonna go to school for something, it has to be something that I'm extremely passionate about. I was never about, you know, going to school, getting an education just to have an education because that's what you're supposed to do. So I always struggled with that because I never really found something that I really, really wanted to do. So I worked these, you know, odd jobs, although I had some of those jobs for a very long time. I was in sales for a while. I worked at Volvo for about six years. And then around 2008, 2009, my eyes started opening a little bit towards, you know, making a living online. I saw a lot of people were able to do that, but I didn't know how to do that like what what do i do to be able to make a living online so i started you know getting into certain like affiliate marketing companies and stuff like that fly and a long story short is that i failed miserably i made maybe a couple bucks here and there but it was never like i could live a laptop lifestyle or anything like that it just wasn't working out for me you know it was frustrating but i always had that longing like i don't want to live the typical rat race life. You know, working a nine to five job, or like I did at Volvo at times, work from 3 p.m. till midnight, but either way, whatever hours you were working, it was that typical rat race life. You're kind of working uh, just to make a paycheck, you know, to pay for your bills, and then uh, you can get vacation. You know, in Sweden, you get a month's vacation every year. That was very nice. Um, and you kind of looked forward to that. You look forward to the weekend, you know, it, just that whole lifestyle, it just it bothered me. I, just, I didn't want that for my life. And I'm kind of sort of, I guess, explaining that to lead up to the whole 
you know, YouTube career slash life that I have now. So in 2010, I had also been single for a very long time. You know, I'd never really met the one, you know, someone that I, I, I want to spend my life with. And yeah, I, j I just hadn't met the right person. So I went on this online dating website and it just so happened that it, w it was international. So it wasn't just for people in Sweden, it was all over the world. And I happened to see uh, this very pretty woman and uh, I sent her a message. And uh, we started chatting and uh, pretty much hit it off right away. It was awesome. The only issue though was that she lived in the United States, more specifically Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. Uh, her name was Heather. As you guys all know, she's my now wife. And you know, I lived in Gothenburg, Sweden, so uh, pretty far away. But both of us, I guess, we were at a mindset of, you know, it doesn't really matter. And as I mentioned, we, we really hit it off. So what we decided to do after chatting on Skype for like four hours straight every day for two months, we decided to meet up at a neutral spot. And that neutral spot was London. <laughs> So for me, it was only about a two hour flight from Gothenburg and uh, for my wife, or now wife, at the time she wasn't, of course, it was, uh, I don't know, six, seven hour flight. And we spent five awesome days in London getting to know each other, kind of figuring out if we wanted to move on past our first, you know, real life meeting. And uh, we did, but it was also very tough. So, I mean, I had to fly home, she had to fly home. And then, uh, you know, again, it's far away. It's not like you can see each other every weekend. Now this was beginning of March, 2011. And we decided that I would come and visit her, you know, meet her family and stuff like that in April, 2011. I did that and during that time, we actually got engaged. And that's when we decided that we're gonna start the process of uh, getting my ass over here, which was the visa process. And uh, the visa process can be uh, pretty complicated and it's not an overnight thing. It takes a long time. So during 2011, I came over in the summer for a month. I came over for her birthday in October. She actually came to Sweden in November of that year to see my family. And right after she flew home, we got a notification that our application was approved. Now this just means that the actual visa application was approved. Now there's a whole different uh, process that starts after that. So I flew over here for Christmas 2011 as well. Uh, I was actually here for three weeks. I flew home beginning of January at some point. That's when the whole process intensified a lot because I had to sell everything I have pretty much. Uh, I had an apartment at the time. I had to obviously quit my job, sell my furniture. You know, there wasn't really, I mean, I can't bring anything except for my clothes. There was a lot of paperwork involved. Uh, I had to go on interviews at the American Embassy in Stockholm. You have to take all these, um, you know, blood tests. You have to make sure that you're not sick and stuff like that. A bunch of physicals, you know, that kind of thing. It, it's pretty intense. But when April 2nd, 2012 had arrived, that's when I landed here in Pittsburgh. We got married about 10 weeks after that. Now, for those of you who follow my channel, you know about Sydney. At the time, she was about a year and nine, ten months. She was about to turn two years old. So when I moved here, it wasn't just that I got a wife, I got a stepdaughter. And it's absolutely awesome. Although, it hasn't been uh, completely smooth sailing the whole time. So coming as an immigrant from Sweden, there's a lot of loops you got to jump through once you land here. The visa that we had was a fiance visa, which means you have to get married within 90 days. If you don't get married right away, they kick you out. Then when you're married, it takes six months to get a work permit. So I couldn't work for six months. And the, the money that I had uh, brought with me from home, and it wasn't like I was making tons back then, you know, that kind of uh, dried up pretty quick. And basically my wife was the one that was supporting us during this time. And it was, you know, I mean, that's not easy, especially for me as a man, you know what I mean? And so, you know, there, there were some trials and tribulations there, but uh, as you can tell, we're still here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy. But two days after my work permit arrived, I had a job. That job was at a titling company and uh, I pretty much made a third of uh, what I was used to making. So I worked there for a year and uh, you know, I mean, that, that it wasn't my thing. It's the whole cubicle life. It's pretty much sort of the same type of stuff that I've done before and I just wasn't happy with it. So I knew I had to 
figure something out, do something else. And, you know, I'm into cars. I've always loved cars. And I've always thought, you know, I mean, what if I give, you know, selling cars a shot? I've had been in sales before, but not, you know, selling cars. So I apply for a job at Moon Township Ford. And I was hired. And this was in 2013. And I did okay. I mean, I wasn't the best salesman there. I wasn't the worst one either. I was in the middle there somewhere. But I started dabbling in uh, other ways of being able to sell a car. And that's when I started filming videos with my iPhone. In the beginning, they were, you know, portrait mode. They weren't even landscape. So I would upload them and they were, you know, that was horrible. But my thought behind all this was that if I could, you know, upload a, a quick little review of, let's say, a Ford Explorer, Ford Focus, whatever, upload it to YouTube, maybe someone that's in the market for a car like that can find my little video and come up buy a car from me. So that was my thought process. Now, if we fast forward a little bit, uh, that didn't really work out. I didn't have people come to the dealership because they found my video on YouTube. I mean, there was a lot to learn with, you know, SEO and ranking. And, you know, when you just start a, a YouTube channel from scratch, your videos aren't gonna be plopping up in the you know top spot of the search engines <laughs> but after a while you know I actually enjoyed doing it I thought it was fun you know filming uploading it to YouTube and you know I started getting some subscribers it was weird and I remember uploading one video it was a 2015 Ford Explorer limited review uh, it was a walk around about six minutes I didn't drive the car or anything like that I uploaded that video and then I didn't really think about it much and I remember I checked in on my little YouTube channel at the time there a week later and the video had like 700 views and I thought there was a major glitch and YouTube was broken like how could I have 700 views that was nuts but it ended up that that video started ranking and started getting views it's actually still on my YouTube channel way in the back there were some videos that I made and I, I deleted them and stuff but that's one of them that's uh, still there and uh, I started getting comments, people saying, you know, I mean, hey, I didn't buy a car from you, but this video really helped me out. You know, I live, you know, somewhere else, like a different state. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Uh, you know, I felt like I provided some kind of value, although they didn't come and buy a car from me. I didn't make any money or anything like that. You know, I enjoyed it. It was fun. So I kept doing it. I, I, I kept uploading videos to my YouTube channel. They were all Ford reviews, you know, walk around, stuff like that. And then I figured out you can monetize your channel. People are actually making money doing this stuff. And I was like, what? And I had never, like, it was never my intention, my thought. As I mentioned earlier in the video that, you know, I wanted to be able to figure something out to, to do online and make money online. But I had never thought that it was going to be YouTube. So I applied for, uh, you know, monetization on my channel and I was approved because at the time I think you needed 100 uh, subscribers. I don't know what the watch time was and stuff like that, but I had attained, you know, at least 100 subscribers. So my channel was monetized and a month and a half later, I got a check for $171. And I've, I've mentioned this before, but my eyes went boom. I saw the light. I was like, what? I'm making actual money doing this? Although it was like nothing. I mean, it's not like <laughs> I was making a living. I was just making some extra money. So like I said, I saw the light and I went, Poof. I ran with it. I, I uploaded as many videos as I could. Although in comparison to what I'm doing now as full time, it was nothing, but it was like a video a week. I mean, I, I had a full time job and stuff. I didn't have the same time to, you know, create content stuff. But as soon as we got a new car in, it was a, you know, I filmed it, car review, uploaded it to YouTube. Some just completely bombed, but some did pretty good. And, uh, you know, my, in my income started going up. I went from 171 bucks to like one month was 200. And I remember I started thinking, I was like, what if this YouTube payment stuff can like cover my car payment? I mean, if that happens, man, I've made it. I, felt, I mean, I felt like I was gonna be a millionaire just because I didn't have to pay my car payment with my, you know, salary that I earned at my job. And lo and behold, a couple months later, that actually happened. And it just kept on going the whole time. And then if we fast forward to December 2016, I got this idea when I was driving down uh, the parkway, I was reaching for my phone, it was sitting, uh, it was like in, in this phone holder, and, and it was sitting close to the push uh, start button. And I was like, what would happen if I accidentally hit that when I was trying to grab from my phone? Because my phone was sitting on this phone holder that you stick to your air vent. And it was just an idea that kind of appeared in my mind. 
So I made a video called what happens if you hit the button while driving. Now at the time, you know, my channel is growing the whole time, but it, it's growing like this. I'm, I'm getting maybe like 500,000 views a month, something like that. I upload that video on December 20th. On December 25th, it went viral. So I got 1 million views. It was 1 million and 2,000 views in one day. And of course, I mean, I haven't experienced anything like that to this day. But at that time, I was, I mean, I couldn't believe it. It was the weirdest thing ever. So I kept going with that concept and I did several videos of that nature. What happens if you put your transmission in reverse? What happens if you put your transmission in park? What happens if you throw your key fob out the window? All kinds of weird videos and they all went viral. I mean, at least a million plus views and my channel grew. I went from 15,000 subscribers to over 100,000 subscribers in a month. And that's when I really started thinking this could be something that I could do full time. I could actually quit my job and do YouTube. I had now started watching tons of other YouTubers and I saw that I, there were YouTubers that were you know, making a living doing this and making a good living. And basically what I'm trying to say, I had finally found something that I loved doing, that I was passionate about. I was making videos of cars, uploading them to YouTube, and it was making me money. And at the time that I was going viral, of course, I was making more money than I did at my job. So, you know, I, I started going harder and harder and harder, and I started understanding that even though, you know, it's going well, you know, at the moment, the key to this whole thing is consistency. You can't start slacking off and be like, oh, I'm making money, I'll upload one video every two weeks. That doesn't work. So I kept going, I kept going, and like YouTube is like this. Yeah, I was going viral at times, but then boom. The next month I was getting like 10% of the views that I was getting at the time of being viral, and you kind of like back to reality. But I loved what I was doing, and I understood that that's the key. And since I love what I'm doing, I'm gonna have the consistency to do it. So we're now in the beginning of 2017, and since I'm making extra money, I start seeing the possibility of uh, achieving a lifelong dream of uh, buying my dream car, which was an AMG at the time. It wasn't a C63 specifically because this dream started so far back. The first AMG I'd ever driven was an SL55, a 2002 model. And uh, I just, I absolutely fell in love with the whole brand, the way they sound, how fast they were. At the time, that SL55 AMG was the fastest car in the world with an automatic transmission. But now in 2017, my focus was definitely the C63. And at the time, you know, buying a car that was around $90,000 was still a big, big step for me. But uh, I knew what the possibilities were. That if I had a car like that, I could base a lot of the content off of that car on my channel and I saw a lot of other YouTubers that were basically vloggers. There were a lot of uh, automotive YouTubers that only did car reviews and although I enjoyed it, that's not the only thing I wanted to do. You know, I love having fun in front of the camera, letting you know some of my personality get out there and I know you guys appreciate that as, as well and that's sort of what makes a vlogger successful is that people start connecting with the type of person that you are. And I saw the power in that. And I was like, man, this is so awesome. I can basically film myself, obviously, you know, with the content being grounded in automotive stuff, and that can earn me a living. So if I can get this C63, my dream car, I'll be able to do tons of content with it. So basically, I just took it step by step, man. Uh, my mind was focused on it. That was the car I was gonna get. So I started with uh, going down to Barbie Rail or Mercedes in Wexford, set up an appointment to test drive one. And when I test drove it, obviously I made a video about it, it completely blew me away. I was like, wow, I'd never driven the C63 before. So that was, this was my, my first experience in the car. And after that, it was, it was over. There was no turning back at this point. Um, a week later, I actually ordered my dream spec. It was a black one. Again, if you guys follow the channel, you know exactly what car that was. So this was uh, the middle of March 2017, come beginning of April. I have a bit of an incident at work where uh, I, I wasn't in full agreement with uh, you know, one of my bosses. I ended up walking out. I quit. I didn't get fired. I quit. I walked out. 
And I knew when I made that decision to walk out, I was taking a huge risk because half of my income was going to be cut. I had just ordered a car, you know, for $90,000. You know, I knew what the payment was going to be, 1200 some bucks. At the time, I was making like four to $5,000 a month off of YouTube. So was it a, a, a risk? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I knew what the possibilities were. I knew how I could just run with this car, create content, and uh, I knew it was going to generate income for me. I mean, I didn't know 100%, but I had faith. Another thing was that, you know, on the credit application that I had filled out, I was currently employed at the time when I filled it out, when I ordered the car and all that stuff. I had to go back and tell them pretty much that I'm not employed anymore. Uh, all I have is my own business. And uh, this is what it's making. It's a YouTube channel. They were like, what? YouTube channel? But to move it along here, I had to actually uh, switch spots because it's 107 degrees outside and I was sweating my ass off. But I had finally managed to build up very, very good credit. I was 33 when I came to this country, which, I mean, I was an adult. But you start from scratch. I had zero credit, but I was now 38 years old and I had built up good credit. And I had managed to get finance without being properly employed just off of my uh, little YouTube business. And as I had expected, my channel pretty much blew up even more after I bought that car. And uh, irony of the whole thing, I guess, is that it blew up even more when that car was hydrolocked and was totaled seven weeks after I had bought it. Uh, that's kind of how YouTube works. People love drama and that those were definitely pretty dramatic videos. They absolutely sucked to make because my dream car was totaled. And if we fast forward uh, a month after that, I got a new one off of insurance. And uh, I had that car up until April of this year, 2019. So basically, this is where we're at now. Uh, another dream that I had had was to own a supercar at some point. You know, there's different levels to all this stuff, at least for me in my life, where, you know, your belief system will race a level uh, the closer you get. And then when you get to that level, you'll start getting even more faith and, and stronger beliefs in what's possible for your life. And uh, Basically, I, I just want to say that I, I'm, I'm so blessed to be living the life that I'm living. I now have a Ferrari, which is absolutely crazy to me. And I, I've already done a video where I fully explain the whole financial, you know, situation behind me getting this car and, you know, how I was able to afford it. And obviously that YouTube is my business. You know, everything I do with this car you know, is a write-off, you know, when I get gas, when I make the payments, when I pay the insurance, you know, when I go on trips with it, everything like that. That is why I can afford to have this car. And uh, it's just, it, it's so crazy to me. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I could never imagine anything like this. It wasn't planned. I came to this country because I met the woman of my dreams. All this stuff has come after that. And, uh, you know, my whole life, it's just, it, it's, it's so blessed. And I, I live the life that I want to live. That doesn't mean that everything is perfect, that I don't have problems, you know, that my wife and I don't sometimes have problems in our relationship, you know, that things don't go up and down, that, you know, my dad didn't get sick and had a stroke. I mean, shit still happens in your life, but I'm blessed. Like, I'm living the life that I want to live, but part of, of living life is having ups and downs. You know, it's not always going to feel good and all that stuff, but I look at it as I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed. It's not because I have a Ferrari. That's a big part of it because it's my business. It's just life in general. And uh, that's the way I choose to look at life. That's hard sometimes, but it's a renewal of the mind and, and just the way that, you know, you choose to look at everything in life, no matter what circumstance or situation that you might be in. And it's taken me a very long time to get to this point. Um, I can just speak for myself. I don't know how it is for other people. You know, some people mature quicker than others. <laughs> I'm 40 years old now and, you know, I live the life that I want to live. Um, and it's just been such a crazy journey. Like coming from Sweden, pretty much having nothing when I came here, I came for one reason and that was love. Everything that's happened after that is, you know, it's been a blessing, even the ups and downs. And although this is a pretty, I mean, I guess personal video, I don't go into, a, 
you know, every personal thing that's happened since I came here. It's been, it's been a lot of up and downs, but it's when you go through fire and you make it through, that's when you're, you're molded, you know what I'm saying? And I, I just want to tell everyone that watches this video today, and it's not about oh, becoming a YouTuber, no. It's a, about you know chasing a dream. If you have a desire, if you, you know what you would want to do, but maybe you feel like you're afraid to take those steps, you know, if, if I can give you any kind of encouragement and more courage to go for your dreams, then uh, this video is definitely worth it because living a life that you don't really want to live it's not really living that it's just plain and simple fact and truth and i know that a lot of people live a life like that because i did for a very long time you're in a rat race and i'm not just speaking about you know the specific job or anything like that it's just that you know you're not happy you don't feel passionate just go for what you want, man. You only have one life. And I understand, you know, maybe you have a family and stuff. You have other people to think about. I get it. But take it one step at a time. You deserve it. Because the thing is, there's no one like you. You're unique. There is no one that is just like you. There is no one that is just like me. You know, we're unique individuals. We have something to bring. We have something to offer for the world that no one else can offer the world. So you have to understand that if you don't believe that, start believing it because it's true that's just it that's just how it is and you got to start believing in things you got to start you know visualizing your life even though it doesn't feel like it's possible you still have to start visualizing the life that you want when you start visualizing the life that you want and when you start feeling that it's already happening before it's happened that's when you start molding your future and the universe will start putting things in place to get you to where you want to go and that that's basically my point with this video because that's what I feel that my life has come to and I know why you know certain things has fallen into place for me that's because of visualization and basically the law of attraction now I have a very strong faith in God so obviously that's where my faith is but the law of attraction is all part of that we're created out of love we're created to live a life that we want to live we're not created to live a life of you know misery and I'm not <laughs> trying to be all dramatic here but I think a lot of you guys understand what I'm trying to say here so uh, you know if, if I can encourage anyone to you know chase the dream that they've been dreaming about for a very long time but they just haven't been able to take that step I want to tell you to take that step because you have nothing to lose you don't if you don't live the life that you want to live you're gonna sit later on and regret the life that you're currently living you know, I'm able to drive around in this car, make content, upload it to YouTube, you know, travel around, meet new people. It is a lot of work. It's not a walk in the park. It doesn't mean that it's easy or anything like that. But, you know, like I said earlier, when you're passionate, you get the consistency because you have to be consistent in chasing your dream. You can't, you know, start slacking off and, you know, I deal with that. You know, sometimes I just want to sit around and do nothing. And it's not like I can't do that. But for me, it's easy to fall into a pattern of just becoming lazy. And that's stuff that I have to work on as well. So, you know, I know I've been talking a lot in this video. And every time I make videos like this, they're, they're not scripted whatsoever. So I know it's a, you know, there might be some repetition and uh, 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 going back and forth and stuff like that. And I don't think I want to babble for too much longer but I wanted to share my story because I've had a lot of people ask about it you know I mean how'd you meet your wife how'd you get here how long have you been here and how'd you get started with YouTube and you know all, all that stuff and I, I hope that I somewhat covered that in this video I mean I'm 40 years old a million other things I, I probably could have mentioned and stuff but the video would take forever but uh, if you're watching this video and you're, you're you know you're looking to start a YouTube channel and that kind of stuff because I get a lot of questions about that I mean a lot of questions like can you help me out like what do I need to start and blah 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 I think the, the key to my success was that I, I wasn't really thinking about money when I started my YouTube channel I wasn't thinking about oh I need to get all these views I wasn't you know I was, I was trying to help people out I mean, I guess I was thinking about money a little bit because I wanted people to come buy a car for me, but I wasn't thinking about like <laughs> ad revenue and stuff like that. I didn't even know about that. And I kept on doing it because I thought it was fun. But basically, if you start a YouTube channel, unless you have a huge production company behind you, you're like part of this corporate conglomerate or something like that, you have to go into it, you know, creating content of something 
that you're passionate about. And the great thing about YouTube is that there's no overhead. It wasn't for me for a long time. I mean, overhead now is buying these cameras and stuff like that, but I do that because I, I choose to. It's not like I really have to. I don't, I don't have to go buy these new cameras. I film with my phone for a long time. I used the cheapest editing software. It was called Filmora or something like that. It cost 40 bucks. Creating a YouTube channel is free. It doesn't cost anything. Uploading a video is free. Just run with it. Start creating content and uh, keep doing it. Don't give up and eventually you will be successful. Let your, you know, if you're gonna be a vlogger, let your personality come out because uh, trust me, I promise you, people are gonna be attracted by that. There's gonna be a lot of people out there that just love to sit and watch your videos. So all I can say is, Go for it. But with that being said, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Give this video a huge thumbs up. Remember to subscribe as well. And remember, there's no one just like you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.